Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are not using Canva, I'm here to say that you are missing out. Canva is a fantastic online design program that you can use to create presentations, social media posts, and yes, classroom decor. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create classroom posters and labels using Canva. Plus, I'm gonna show you how to get access to all of the Canva premium features completely free. In case you didn't know, teachers can sign up for Canva for Education, which gives you access to all of the premium features completely free. All you have to do is sign up with your school email address or upload verification of your teaching certificate and your employment, and Canva will upgrade you to Canva for Education for free within a few days. So you can go to canva.com slash education for all of the details, but I will also have the direct link in the description box for you. But let's go ahead and dive into creating some classroom decor. One of the things I love about Canva is there are tons of templates that you can use and then customize to fit your own preferences. So we're gonna start by creating just some basic posters for our classroom and let's check out what templates Canva has. So on the Canva homepage, we're gonna click in the search bar and type classroom posters. Click enter and just see what comes up. We'll peruse, if you will. So scrolling down, I'm seeing a lot of great options. And again, these are all customizable. So you can change the fonts and the colors and the images that you see to fit your own preferences. Let's start with something very simple. I saw these biology posters. Now, maybe I don't teach science, but I teach reading. I practically make romance into a science. I'm gonna show you how to customize them. We're gonna click in order to use this template and we're gonna select customize this template. It is now saving an editable copy to my Canva account. Go ahead and click got it. Now from here, I can go into the posters and edit them as needed. So let's create some genre posters. Let's say I want this to be a memoir and let's go ahead and type in the new definition. So we will say the story of a person's life written by that person. Now the font has gone on to an extra line. So let's go ahead and reduce the font size up here just by clicking the minus. And then I can even click and drag it to kind of reposition it. That looks pretty good. I do wanna change the fonts. So nothing against this font, but I love me some poppins. So I'm gonna come here to poppins and let's make the title black. Extra bold, I like extra bold a little bit more. And then let's change this font to medium or semi-bold, semi-bold, I like that. Okay, now let's say I don't wanna use these colors. They just don't quite match my classroom decor. I'm gonna select the background, come up here to the background color. And the great thing is within Canva, you can save some of your favorite colors. So for example, I have like my logo colors and my bright colors. We're gonna make this one pink just for now. And then I need to change that clip art image. So I don't want this leaf, <laughs> but I wanna find some kind of an image that shows like a person writing. So under elements, I'm going to search and I'm going to just type writing. We'll see what comes up. I could go into graphics. So more like clip art looking images. I can go to photos, but y'all know, I love those kind of icon looking images. So something like this, but ideally I'd like a hand with it. Maybe that, yeah, that's not so bad. Okay, once I've inserted it, I could change the color. So if I wanted it to be that same pink, I could make it pink, but I feel like the black kind of pops. I'm gonna go ahead and resize it just by clicking and dragging in the corners. And then again, I can kind of reposition it as needed, but that's looking pretty good. I can go in and customize each of these, but since I've already set up my font the way that I want it on the first poster, I'm gonna duplicate this page. So I'm gonna click the duplicate button right here. It looks like two squares and the one has a plus sign. Maybe this time we're gonna make the background orange. 
Okay, that looks good. And let's do fantasy. Let's go ahead and type in our definition. So let's do a story with imaginative characters or events that could not take place in real life. Okay, so I'm gonna have to, again, reduce the font size. So I'm just gonna click the minus or I could type in a specific number if I wanted. Okay, that looks pretty good. We need to change out this image. So I'm gonna delete it. This time, let's type in fantasy and just see what comes up. <laughs> Okay, all right, so we've got, you know, some fairies, some dragons. Ideally, I want an image that has a similar look to this one, just so there's that consistency. So I'm gonna scroll down. Ooh, I like the unicorn. Ooh, ooh, okay. Maybe if I type in unicorn, but I'm gonna type in outline and see what comes up. Okay, we're looking a little bit better. Um, Do we go that? I need it thicker, that's not thick enough. I want the thickness to match the other one. This is so ridiculous and y'all probably think it doesn't matter, but it does to me. <laughs> okay, that one's okay, but I feel like I can find better. What about this one? Oh no, not that one. That, oh no, that one's even thinner. Okay, maybe, maybe we're not gonna go unicorn. Maybe we're gonna go magic wand, magic wand. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. See, this one has a nice thick outline. Mm, love it. Okay, I'm gonna resize it, move it over into the middle, and you can either click and drag, and you'll see those guidelines. So see that pink line that shows up? That shows me that it's in the middle, but I'm gonna off-center it again. You can also click position, and then align to page. You can select center, and it will pop it over. So that looks pretty good. I could repeat this process for as many as I need. I'm gonna go ahead to the grid view. So I'm gonna click the little waffle looking image down at the bottom, and I'm gonna get rid of these other ones that I don't need. So I've clicked on the first one. I'm gonna hold down shift and click the last one. That's gonna select all of those, and I'm going to click the trash can to delete them. Once I've gotten all of the posters set up the way that I want them, I can then print from Canva. So if you click print posters up here, it's gonna show you like printing services that Canva offers. I wanna print from my home printer. So instead I'm gonna click share and I'm gonna click download. From here, I could actually download each page as its own image or I can download it as a PDF. So I'm gonna click file type and I'm gonna select PDF print. It's gonna be a little bit higher quality and I can choose to flatten it if needed. That's gonna basically take all of my images and like make it into one rather than having those different layers of text and images. For what I'm doing, I don't need to worry about that. I can also select certain pages if I only want to print certain ones, but I'm gonna go ahead and download this as the full PDF. I'm gonna click download. It'll take a few seconds and then you will see that PDF Boom, there it is. I can go ahead and click that in order to open it. And then from here, I can print it. So I can click the print button. And because this isn't sized exactly for an eight and a half by 11, which I will show you in a second how you can resize the documents, but I'm gonna just make sure that it is fit to paper. And then all I have to do is print it out. But if you did need to resize the template, within Canva, there is this resize button. This is one of those premium features that you get access to for free. And I can make this any custom size. So maybe I want it to be an eight and a half by 11. I can choose this to be inches. I need the width to be 11, the height to be 8.5. And from here, now there also are like set ones. So if you're looking for a specific size, you might find it there. I can choose to either copy and resize. That's going to keep this file, but create another file that is that new size. So I now have two different versions. Or if I just want to resize this one, I don't need to keep the original. I could choose resize. So just to show you what that would look like, I'm gonna click resize and I messed up. I did 11 by eight and a half instead of eight and a half by 11. It's fine, we're gonna fix it. Let's make the width eight and a half and the height 11. Y'all were probably watching that like, Michelle, come on, what are you doing? Okay, this time we're gonna click resize. <laughs> and once again, it's just gonna reformat it, but you will notice it has shrunken down my text and images because I messed up. 
So in order to fix that, I'm going to click and drag in order to highlight all of those elements. And then I'm just going to resize them all at once. I'm gonna click and drag so that it fills up more of the page. And then again, I can click and drag to resize it and I'm good to go. But I also wanna show you how to create a design from scratch. So if you can't find a template that's exactly what you need, or you know your creative juices are just flowing and you want a blank page and have at it. The goal is to get from point A to point B as creatively as possible. You can create a file that is any size that you want. So on that main homepage, you can click create a design. From here, you can select one of those set sizes. So for example, a doc or a whiteboard or a presentation, but you also can create a custom size. So I'm gonna click custom size and this time I'm gonna type it correctly. I'm gonna switch pixels to inches and if I want an eight and a half by 11, I'm gonna type in eight and a half by 11, cause that makes sense. And I'm gonna click create new design and it's gonna open up that blank file. Now from here, I can insert a template at any time. You'll see that over on the left-hand side where it says template. So I can search and find what I need, but I also can design right on the page. So let's create a set of clock labels. So if you teach elementary, most likely your students may still struggle with telling time on an analog clock. Closing time. So a lot of teachers will put little labels next to the numbers to let them know how many seconds that is. So for example, next to the one, it would be five seconds. Next to the two, it would be 10 seconds. So I'm gonna insert in some circles. Now, I just wanna show you a few different things you could do. Under elements, I'm gonna type in circle. From here, I can insert in a shape or I can insert in a frame. Just to show you how the frame may be helpful, I'm gonna click it and notice it has this like image kind of look to it. I can now click and drag any image in order to fill that space. So it will automatically crop the image to a circle. So for example, if I had an animal theme in my room, I could type in animal print and I could find either a graphic or a photo. Let's go to photos. Okay, maybe this like giraffe print, I can click and drag it into that circle. When I let go, it will give me that image, but it will be cropped to the circle. And from here, I can resize it as needed. But if you want just some plain, you know, colors, if you're a little bit like me and you don't like crazy prints, I'm gonna delete that frame and this time I'm gonna type in circle, but I'm gonna select that shape. So I'm gonna click all, here is the shape. From here, I can choose the fill color and also the outline. So let's say I want these to match those bright colors. I'm gonna come up here to the fill color, choose the pink, and then the outline is right next to it or the border as it calls it. So I want a solid border. And let's go six. Okay, that looks pretty good. I can also change the color. So currently it is black, which I like that kind of black border, but if I wanted a yellow border or an orange border or green, I could do any of those colors. So we're gonna keep it black. And once again, I can click and drag it around on my little canvas here and I can resize it. And as I resize, you'll notice that height, it will tell you what the size is. So currently it is three inches by three inches. I think that looks pretty good. And then I could insert a text box on top. So if I click text, I'm gonna insert in this text box and I would type in like zero, zero for the first one. That would be my, you know, 12 o'clock. I can either resize it up here in the font size by using the plus or minus or typing in a specific size, but I can also click and drag and you'll notice that size will change as I click and drag it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it kind of centered using those guidelines. That looks pretty good. From here, I wanna duplicate both the circle and the text box. So again, I can click and drag, and then I can either duplicate directly from here or I could group them first. It's gonna kinda of package them in together. I'm gonna to go ahead and group them and I can click the duplicate button. So that's gonna copy them both together. I can resize it on my screen and I'm gonna go ahead and like put them both in the center. Yeah, that looks good. Now I can click each of those elements and just change the color or the text. So when I select this circle, I can come up here to the color. Maybe I want it to be orange. 
and then I can click in the text box and change it to five seconds. Now I can duplicate both of them. So I can click and drag to select them both, duplicate them and drag them down and we'll put them right in the middle. Let's make this one a yellow circle and we're gonna make it 10 seconds. This one will be green. Okay, 15 seconds. And once again, we're going to duplicate, drag it down and notice Canva will kind of tell me, hey, now they're evenly spaced. Ah, it makes me so happy. This one is going to be a blue circle and we're gonna make it 20 seconds. This one will be a purple circle. <laughs> Poet didn't know it, make it rhyme anytime. We're gonna make it 25 seconds. From here, if I wanna keep that same pattern going in rainbow order, I can duplicate the entire page. So all I need to do is click that same duplicate button, but this time it's for the page. And now I have another copy of it and we're gonna change it to 30 seconds. 35, this time my colors are already set up, so all I have to do is change the numbers. Let's go forward, oh, oh, what did I do? Is it just because it's too wide? I think so. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to ungroup these. Now I can edit that number to be 40, and I can resize that text box just a little bit to get it to fit, and then redrag it into the center. Little hack for you. Same thing's probably gonna happen on this one. Yep, I'm going to ungroup change that one to a four, resize, and then recenter. Okay, that looks good. 50 seconds and then 55. So once again, from here, once I have that design ready to go, I can go up to share. I can select download. I can select PDF print, choose my pages if need be, click download. It'll take a few seconds depending on how many pages you have. And I didn't give this one a title, that's why I downloaded as 00, zero. but I can edit the title up here. So I could have this say, clock labels, and then that would be the title when it downloads, but I can open it up and print from there. Now, that is a very, very small taste of what you can do with Canva. There are so many other things that I could show you, but I don't know if you're interested. So if you want me to create more videos like this, leave a comment, let me know what do you wanna see? Do you want more tutorials or ideas? Let me know and I will give it to you. But if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. Share this out with your teacher friends if you did find it helpful. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.